Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel again. Uh, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe it. Uh, this video is all about correlated subqueries. Uh, as I'm already posting some videos for MS SQL Server, so I'm just posting within the same uh, forum. But uh, correlated subqueries are technically a database uh, concept and uh, we can use correlated subqueries in almost every RDBMS, whether SQL Server or uh, Oracle or uh, let's say Postgres. So <clears throat> let's try to understand what correlated subqueries are and how they are exactly uh, helpful in our real world. So whenever we talk about correlated subqueries, uh, correlated subqueries means that for every row in the outer query, the inner query is run one time. So it means whenever we talk about a subquery, subquery is technically like you have an outer query and you have an inner query. The inner query runs first. The result of the inner query is used by the outer query. And then finally, you get the final result. But in correlated subquery, it is a little bit different. The inner query is not run one time, rather it is run multiple times. So it means that in case of a correlated subquery, we assume that if a table has 10 rows, the inner query is going to be run for 10 times. So that's where the correlated subqueries are because for every single row in the outer query or every single row in the table, the inner query is going to be run. So that's what the purpose, the correlated subqueries all. And uh, let's practically see how the correlated subqueries can be actually useful in the real world scenario. So let's see how correlated subqueries can be exactly used. I have a table, uh, which is technically an employee table. If uh, some of you guys have worked with Oracle, uh, you might see two tables, employee as well as a DPT table, which are very common. I've just used those tables in this SQL Server. So the employee table is technically having like an employee number, an employee name, a job, and a manager number. So now it means for 7369, the manager is 7902. And if we go on to the 7902, so this guy is 7902 Ford is actually the manager of Smith. So this is how the table has been <coughs> uh, set up. And it has a high date column, a salary column, a commission column, and even a department number in which they are working. Now, if we want to find out, let's say there is a situation where we want to find out uh, all the employees who are getting salary greater than the salary, the average salary of their own department. So that's what we need to find out. Now, this kind of a query, because every single employee, whoever we are referring to in the employee table, we need to calculate the average salary of that particular employee's department number and then compare it with his or her salary. And if the salary is, is his or her salary is greater than the average salary of that particular department, then uh, that particular employee would be listed within the same. Otherwise, he is not going to be included. Now, in this case, every single employee is going to be checked up against the calculated average salary of that particular employee, uh, that particular employee's department number. So this means if I have, let's say 14 rows in this particular table, my inner query would be run 14 times because for every single row, because it picks up this first row, calculates the average salary of department number 20, compares with it if the condition satisfies, it kind of includes that into the result set. And if it is not, it just skips that. So let's try seeing how we can find out this query. So we'll say select star from employee, just giving an employee X, that's a alias name, where X dot salary. So salary should be greater than, that's what we need to do. And then what we are going to do over here is, so we say average salary, from employee Y, that is an inner query. I'm just giving a Y as a last name. And then I'll say where 
x dot y dot department number is equal to x dot department number now why i'm doing a y dot department number is equal to x dot department number because whenever the salary is going to be compared it should be compared with the average salary of that particular employee's department number so this particular condition y dot department number is equal to x dot department number makes sure that the employee in the outer query is exactly referring or being referred to his or her own department and then the average salary is calculated and once the average salary is calculated then his salary is compared so if the salary is greater than that so it means that particular employee is getting salary greater than the average salary of his or her own department so let's try running this query so you run this okay so we get this uh, result set where we have six employees those who are getting salary these are the salaries now if you see uh, president who is getting 5000 department number 10 so department number 10 would have some average salary which we cannot display because it's a group by clause so but his salary is greater than the average salary of that so if we want to let's say select uh, department number and average salary uh, from EMP group by department number so what we'll do is we'll just fire both of them these queries side by side so we run that so if you see for department number 10 the average salary is 2916 and then for 10 this is 5000 greater and there is no other person for 20 the average salary is 2175 and 20 this is 3000 3000 2975 which is greater and for 30 it is 1566 and you are getting 2850 and 1600 which is definitely greater than that so this way we are using a correlated subqueries to actually execute and find out all the employees who are getting salary greater than the average salary of their own departments so remember always guys the correlated subqueries the inner query is always going to be executed for every outer row that is being checked out so that's the key of that the inner query does not run one time rather multiple times i hope uh, uh, this video is going to help you out with the correlated subqueries and you can use this concept in the actual real world scenarios where you can find this very useful and as a concept wise also you need to remember because uh, in your actual real world scenarios you would encounter a lot of situations and use cases where this correlated subquery subqueries are going to be helpful to you so thank you guys thank you for joining i'll be coming up with some another video stay tuned and please do subscribe to my channel thank you